Hi, everybody. This is Sherry Bechtel, editor for Finder.com Share Trading and Investing Channel. And I'm here today talking Coinbase's direct listing with Shiv Madan, the CEO of Moonwalk, and with Fred Shabesta, the co founder of Finder. Welcome so much. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. And uh, I'm really excited to talk about Coinbase's direct listing and kind of pick your brains about uh, what you think it's going to, to turn out to be. It's, it's, it's one of those moments in time, really, um, where we're going to see a real massive cryptocurrency go into the other mode of the share trading world. It's a moment in time. It's a moment in history. Let's dive right in. Coinbase's estimated valuation is upwards of $68 billion. This is massive. It eclipsed uh, Intercontinental Exchange Inc., uh, which is the New York Stock Exchange parent company, NASDAQ, and the London, the London Stock Exchange. How realistic is this valuation? My, my take is that we're looking at the total market cap of cryptocurrency as as the benchmark uh, here. Total market cap of cryptocurrencies is uh, 1.68 trillion. 68 billion is a is a small fraction. Considering that Coinbase is the is the blue chip premier platform for for trading cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, for retail as well as institutional investors, I I don't think it's out of the question. I actually think with the recent synthetic application of stocks turning into cryptocurrency themselves, so like you can buy you know, an Amazon stock in, in a cryptocurrency form, um, which has a synthetic representation of it, that actually opens up the space where the NYSE and the LSE and, and obviously the massive exchange of the NASDAQ in and of themselves are being challenged to being their actual usage is going to be challenged as well. And potentially Coinbase could be a, a venue for that, given it's that we'll have now that, that security and stability. And I think what's really fascinating is Coinbase trades 24-7. If you're trading seven out of seven days versus 4.5 out of seven, yeah, you're probably going to make more money. So I think the revenue potential is high. How high do you see the valuation going? Um, what's where's the ceiling here, or is there a ceiling? I think there's going to be a pullback, and then there will be you know a re a retick about what exactly the market should be um, pricing that at. I think it could go higher. There's a bit of an implied valuation there. Obviously, there's a huge amount of liquidity that still needs to come in because that's obviously a very small venue. But I, it looks it looks fairly strong to me. I tend to agree. They're a much stronger story from a valuation standpoint than a firm, and a firm doubled on on day one. So 68. I think on speculation, it could go much higher than that on day one. Whether it tails off is an uncertainty, but I think certainly um, speculators could drive it up to 100. With a crypto ETF listed in Canada and Coinbase listing in the US, um, would you consider crypto mainstream now? Has crypto gone mainstream? Um, and is that a good thing? Yeah, I think um, 100%. It's definitely on that cusp. The percentage of Americans that are owning Bitcoin, it's, it's about 6.2%. That was from a survey in 2019. That's, you know, it's still pretty solid. I think it's, the, the, the narrative really now has changed, but to Bitcoin being a lot about the store of value. I think that's really kicked up a lot of interest from corporates. If you think about those corporations, they need to audit themselves. And so that means the accountants need to figure it out. Then all of the people who come through have to go and learn that as well. That's of when I think things become more mainstream. I think that you're certainly dealing with this store of values as being the, the main concept that is pushing forward you know, acquisition. And if, if store of value is, is a concept that pervades, it's not unforeseeable that sovereign wealth funds you know, could take it as a percentage of assets under management, central banks. Uh, and, and once you get into that realm, you're really talking multiples uh, you know, in terms of valuation of Bitcoin. And it, it then just becomes a one piece of a portfolio that everyone has to have. Um, are you concerned about big money causing crypto to stray from its decentralized purpose? I think the, the likes of Coinbase coming into the market and really making it easy for institutional investors to, to own Bitcoin and even for the derivatives exchanges for them to you know, create instruments that can enable institutions to, to take a bet on the direction of, of Bitcoin, I think it's it's net positive because the more portfolios it ends up in, the more retail investors get to know about it. Obviously, the, the rapid appreciation of Bitcoin itself resulting from institutional inv investors' involvement is a net positive because retail investors can come in and start trading it because they see that it's a, it's a, it's a fast-growing asset. So I'm net in favor of you know, big institutions coming in. So I, th I think it just it just highlights the fact that, you know, smart people are thinking about it. Big money, it can only really add to it right now and add more legitimacy. It's, you know, something that should decentralize in its core. You know, when BitTorrent got really, really big, BitTorrent has never turned off um, and it continues to be 
um, prevalent. Um, I think in the same way, you know, you can come in in the same way. It's still going to be very decentralized, mainly because it's built that way <laughs> from the start. So it was supposed to be stress tested. There already is very large companies that are actually operating in the market. I just want to add a quick note if I can, Sherry. Right now, Coinbase is trading at four hundred and eleven dollars. There's one hundred and eighty-six million shares outstanding. So that that puts it at a valuation of seventy-six point four billion right now that it could potentially trade at. That's what the current price is. That's obviously a little higher than the 68, but I think that's obviously not much without that much liquidity as well. So I think once you once you trade and and the hype market, I think you could see to answer that question before, you could see maybe a hundred even. Wow. Amazing. Coinbase's valuation on that topic, um, it, it seems to be sort of in lockstep with Bitcoin's rallying price. Um, is there a chance that a future crypto winter, could this cripple Coinbase's stock price going forward? I don't think, I think cryptocurrencies are, it's too much now, too many people, too integrated. There's too much other stuff built on it. Like I think this whole DeFi thing in and of itself to me is absolutely fascinating. And it's another whole ecosystem that she's massively ballooning. So that gives cadence to that. And then when you make money in, in crypto, you always bring it back to Bitcoin. <laughs> like, you, you know, it's like, where am I going to put this money? Am I going to put it into keep it in US dollars or, you know, Australian dollars or Swiss francs or whatever it is, pounds. And you're like, mm, I might put some of it in, in Bitcoin. And you just let it, you don't really mind. You just let it run. And, and you just, you're never going to sell it. You just hold it and bank it. And I think that's the same kind of thing when there's going to be a lot of money made from this bull run. And then I think people are going to put that into assets that they want to hold for the long haul. And I think a lot of that's going to be in Bitcoin. Wholeheartedly agree. I think, you know, Bitcoin is um, at this point unbreakable. Uh, and and the question is, you know, where does it go? Does it get to, does it get to 100K? Um, but I think it's going to be a lot of institutions you know, starting to pick up. And Coinbase will benefit, you know, from that for sure. Because if Bitcoin goes down and there's another crypto winter, sure, they're going to they're going to take the hit. Um, let's chat a little bit about the cryptos that Coinbase supports. How do you feel the direct listing will impact those cryptos? Are we going to see a surge? It would be interesting when you got a correlation between owning cryptocurrencies and then if you also owned the Coinbase stock, is there some sort of fancy work there that some hedge fund guys will figure out in order to you know pump up the price of Coinbase, they go and do some fancy things in cryptocurrency. It could happen. It would acquire a lot of money, but fancy things have been done in finance in the past. So the, the, you know, the, the, that's an interesting sort of hook around, I guess, but there's many exchanges as well. So Coinbase is not everything. It's just one. Um, it's just obviously one of the listed ones. I love the, the kind of disruption that they're they're creating, but they're not all going to be winners. I think it'll, it'll certainly not go in lockstep across the board, but some of them could end up you know, having a lot more exposure uh, as a result of every stock you know, investor uh, being able to see what's what's inside there or, or starting to explore what's inside Coinbase. And, and they're just making bets as they sign into their own Coinbase accounts. Let's look a little bit about uh, at the competition that Coinbase is facing. And is there a possibility that they might corner the market? Is there a, a way that they could be the go-to platform for crypto? I don't think so. So maybe just to give context, Binance trades 24 24, 25 billion a day and Coinbase trades 2.6 billion. Wow. So it's one tenth of the size. And then there's a whole series of other exchanges as well. It, it is definitely the trusted venue, but it is regulatory specific. The one thing that Coinbase has done right is, is be in direct conversation with regulators from day one or from very early on. And I think they've created a, a regulatory moat around themselves, you know, cracking Bitrix, all the other US exchanges haven't done as well on that front, um, or, or they don't have a lead like Coinbase does, but there's definitely two different aspects to it. One is, are you the blue chip and do you have the volume? And those things don't necessarily, you know, they don't correlate uh, in this particular market. What would you say are the advantages um, that Coinbase offers, in particular, retail investors? I think simplicity, you know, they really focus on the user experience and making it convenient. And I think Coinbase sort of sat in that middle place where even people who are quite technically sophisticated, they needed to get in, they used Coinbase and then they may, you know, escalate to a more complicated exchange. In addition to the trust factor, I think they've just made it super easy. There's a lot to learn in cryptocurrencies if you really want to do it in a fully decentralized way, like downloading MetaMask, getting comfortable with 
potential you know, hacking risk and, and things like that. So I think they've abstracted all that complexity out and made it simple. Any advice for crypto buyers out there? What should they be watching out for in the coming year? Bitcoin is in this really interesting place and it's hard to comment on price, but it's kind of like dancing right now sideways. It's looking for that next leg up and tr- trying to find that support. It could it could go, I feel like it's got this weird thing right now where it could go down to 46,000 or it could go up to... 100. I think Bitcoin in the long haul is a great asset. And obviously it's not financial advice, but the way I look at it and my, my opinion is that over the long, long haul, you're going to do do well. I think the new gaming platform, this video streaming gaming platform, I think is interesting. And I think it's a natural thing where games already had digital tokens. They already, this is an existing pattern. It's not new. I, I think that's getting closer. And I think with this idea of backing the new tokenomics around DeFi and staking is probably giving it another chance to potentially break through that pioneer and into maybe the early majority. It's just, it's getting really close to, to figuring it out. And that's, that, that, that's I find there's, Areas interesting. The, yeah, interesting to talk about NFTs and and DeFi, and the sort of burgeoning areas and more creative areas that have been built on Ethereum. Um, certainly, Bitcoin, I I think is sideways trading. You know, it's in a sort of wedge. I think the next trajectory is up just because of the institutional bid and the replacement of a small portfolio, percentage of portfolios out of gold I th- will, will continue to happen. DeFi, I think, is is such a place for exploration right now and it's, it's unclear as to exactly where that's going to go because there are going to be regulatory matters that come up in different in, in different jurisdictions and I think those questions still have to be answered uh, in some way shape or form particularly in the US. Uh, NFTs I think are a, a, a a storage of everything else other than currency. I think that they're the uh, they can host complex assets, whether it's a, a piece of digital art or a complex OTC commodity contract. I think that there is a huge future for NFTs that spans beyond digital art. Uh, but that's th- those things don't have to necessarily be on a public blockchain. They can be private. So there's there's different um, ways that that can move forward that may not rely entirely on public blockchain, in my opinion. So one final question for you both: the Coinbase direct listing is now scheduled to go in April. Would you say that Coinbase is a, is a same day buy? Um, do you think that people should uh, invest in Coinbase the day that it goes live or should, uh, should they do a little more research and see where it lands? I'd wait a few weeks and sell down. I think it's one of those ones where if Bitcoin moves as well at the same time, you're going to see some movement. If you have conviction on this company, if you believe it's here to stay, if you can forecast for the next 50 years, if you're happy to own this stock, then it doesn't matter what price you buy it at. Hopefully you buy it at a good price, but letting the air come out of it, I think is not a terrible thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating way to look at it. And I like that a lot. It's a real valuation play here. Uh, and you're, you're really trying to, you're really trying to take a long-term bet. And, and I think Coinbase is a great long-term bet. Shiv Madan, CEO of Moonwalk and uh, Fred Shivesta, founders, co-founder. Thank you both so much for chatting with me about Coinbase and its direct listing. You can get more information about Coinbase's uh, direct listing uh, over at finder.com and our share trading and investing channel. Uh, and we will keep that story updated as news emerges. Thank you both so much for joining me.